All right, in this video, I thought we would do a comprehensive introduction to the PhotoMath app, showing you the uh, awesome capabilities of the app and a few of the things that it actually won't do. So let's get started. Launching the PhotoMath app, you'll see the first thing it brings up is a camera view with the square in the middle. That's where you put your problems in order to scan them. And then if you click the circle at the bottom of the screen, it'll scan and solve the problem for you. So let's see what this thing will do. I've got a whole list of things that we're going to look at here. Starting with polynomial multiplication. Let's see if it'll handle the FOIL method. Scanning and FOILed. So polynomial multiplication, no problem. Next, how about factoring a trinomial? Piece of cake. Simplifying, how about adding or subtracting a rational expression? Now I want you to notice that it did add it, but it multiplied out the denominator. If you click the red uh, in the red box, the arrow, uh, PhotoMath provides a step-by-step -step solution and a little ways down here you're going to notice that if I want the denominator factored I, I can get that. So it is possible to get the uh, denominator factored. Alright, how about adding radical expressions? Done. Multiplying radicals. Mm. If your problem won't fit in your box, you can actually click and adjust that box so that it will fit the problem. Wow. And if you notice, this simplified the radical expression. It even recognized the index of 4. Did it completely for me. All right, so let's look at solving some equations. How about a basic linear equation? Done. Quadratic equation. Notice that the roots here are rational, so it has no problem doing a quadratic with rational solutions. Another quadratic. Oh, this time the solutions are irrational. And again, PhotoMath has no problem displaying the simplified radical answers. And I've got one more quadratic. And if you notice, it says that this problem has no real solution. So what does that mean? It means the solutions are actually complex. And PhotoMath is not giving me the complex solutions. So that's kind of sad. But if we go to the step-by-step, -step, you're going to see that it does do a lot of the work for me. And down here at the bottom, if you want to, you can simplify further using your scientific calculator or whatever. It is possible to take this answer and finish it and get the uh, complex solutions. Alright, next. Absolute value equation. Ooh, what about absolute value inequality? Wow, and it gives the solution in interval notation. That's pretty cool. And now one of the coolest things that I've seen here that it will do is solving a system of linear equations. Yeah, so PhotoMath is going to recognize those as a system, and it's going to solve the system for you. That's pretty freaking awesome. All right, solving a radical equation. No problem. And if I click the arrow to show you something, PhotoMath actually does get both solutions to this, the 18 and the 1. And it shows you down here that the 1 doesn't check out. So it only gives you the solution that actually works in the original equation. All right, next, how about an exponential equation? Again, notice that PhotoMath gives the exact value, but if I want a decimal approximation, I can get that too. See, down here in the red box, it's going to give me the approximate value for T. 
uh, log equation and gives the answer in simplified radical form. Again, if I want to, I can scroll down and get the decimal approximation. And we have a rational equation. And PhotoMath does that too. And one other thing I'd like to point out, if we go to the step-by-step -step solution, notice that PhotoMath also gives us the restrictions. It tells us the numbers that x cannot be for solutions. x cannot be negative 3, x cannot be negative 5. That's kind of handy when you're looking for the uh, domain of a rational function. All right, so that's the last one I have on this sheet. I do have another sheet. And let's talk about graphing real quick. Graphing a linear equation in slope-intercept form. Notice that PhotoMath is not going to display the graph on the screen. It's going to solve it for x uh, for some reason. And then if I go to the step-by-step -step and scroll down, I do see the graph. So the graph is provided, as well as, if you look down here at the bottom, it gives me the root, which is the x-intercept. And it also gives me the vertical intercept, which is the y-intercept. So that's also kind of nice that it gives the x and the y-intercept of the graph. And one more thing, if you click the little button here, you can actually pull this out where you can uh, adjust the graph just with your fingers. You can move it around, you can zoom in and out. That's kind of cool. All right, next, let's see if it recognizes uh, function notation. Yep, uh, again, it displays the x-intercepts. And if I'm looking for the graph, I just go to the step-by-step -step solution, and I see the parabola. Again, some of the cool stuff that it also provides, the roots, those are the x-intercepts. It also gives me the domain, all real numbers. The minimum, now that's awesome. The minimum is the vertex. And sometimes you're asked to find the vertex of a parabola. PhotoMath gives it to you. As well as the vertical intercept. Remember, that means the y-intercept. And again, you can pull this out. You can zoom in, move it around, whatever you want to do with that. All right. How about a linear inequality? Yeah, and this is one of the shortcomings of the uh, app. It won't actually graph a linear inequality. That would be kind of cool if it did, but that's uh, one of the limitations. Okay, so now for something even more awesome. PhotoMath also recognizes handwritten problems. So it'll simplify radical expressions. It'll break it down for you. It recognizes the function notation. And if we analyze that function, you're going to see that it provides the graph, uh, the x-intercept, and uh, the domain, which is what uh, you have to find. Sometimes for a radical function, you need to find the domain, and uh, PhotoMap gives that to you. How about just a regular trinomial with a lead coefficient? It's going to factor that for you. That's kind of cool. Gives it in factored form. How about a uh, rational function? No x-intercepts or zero. Let's see what else it has to say about that. Oh, right here. Look at what it says. x cannot be negative 2 or 2. So if we go down to the bottom, we get the graph as well as the domain. Uh, again, that's one of the things that is important to find for a rational function is the domain. Now I'm not real happy with the way it displays it. Really it's displaying the restrictions. You would need to uh, convert that into either set notation or interval notation. But it does give you the restrictions on the graph. Uh, will it multiply a binomial and a trinomial? 
yep. And this is kind of cool for the science people. If you're having to multiply numbers in scientific notation, yeah, it'll do that for you too. Okay, so now one of the biggest limitations. Mm, the square root of a negative number, it should display 3i because that's a complex solution, but it just says undefined, and that's all the information it gives. So that's one of the things I wish it did that it doesn't. It doesn't actually give you complex uh, answers. But if you have complex numbers that you're trying to work with, like doing the FOIL method with complex numbers, it will do that for you. And then this is one of the big ones, simplifying a uh, fraction with complex numbers. And it will uh, fix those for you. All right, so that's just a basic introduction to the camera feature, showing you how it provides step-by-step -step solutions and other information. A uh, couple other things to uh, notice. You also have, if you click on the calculator, you can actually type in your own problems. I can't imagine why you would do that when you could just write it down on a piece of paper and then scan it. But you can uh, type in problems and PhotoMath will work it out for you. Um, if you click on the camera, you get back to the camera. And then there's this little notebook with a star up here. If you click the little notebook with the star, you're going to see that it keeps a history. I think it keeps up to the last 10 problems you did. So if you need to go back and look at any problem that you previously scanned, you can go back and look up to 10 problems ago. Yeah, so there's there's an overview of how the PhotoMath app works, uh, all the things that it can do, some of the things that it can't do. And I think this video is also nice in that it demonstrates why you should never, ever allow a student to use their cell phone in class or on a test. It just, it does the work for you. So if you're a parent of a homeschooler, don't let them have their phone while they're working on their homework on the computer. If they're doing their math and they have their phone, they can just download this app, scan the problems, and, you know, complete their assignments, and they don't know what the heck they're doing. Um, but as far as a tool that you can use to check your work, this is a fantastic app for checking solutions, for verifying what you've done. Um, I recommend that you go check it out. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, list them in the comments below. And if you want to see any other reviews or videos uh, posted, just let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.